Hello, everybody. Uh, this is Saima with Terra Information Group. I want to welcome you to Terra Information Group's uh, webinar series, and this one is on SAP Success Factors Continuous Performance Management. Uh, we have our VP of Sales, Scott Land, who will briefly talk a little bit about Terra Information and what we do, followed by our presentation on the topic today. I will ask you guys to keep your reserve your questions till the end of the presentation, and we will, uh, you know, we will address the questions uh, at the end of the presentation. So, um, Scott, go ahead. Okay, thank you very much, Saima. Yeah, before we started on the uh, presentation, I just wanted to tell you a little bit about Terra Information Group, just so you have an idea about our company and what we do. Um, so our company's been implementing a HR solutions for the past 20 years. We started doing this in 1997, and our headquarters is in the Chicagoland area, and we have offices throughout the United States, as well as offshore facilities in the Philippines, India, Vietnam, and Argentina. Plus, we also have an office in uh, Germany as well. So we're a certified implementation partner and reseller for Success Factors, and we have excellent references um, throughout the United States. We've implemented over 100 Success Factors projects, and what's nice is that we implement all the different modules of Success Factors, even including um, the partner software, which is benefit focus for benefits and workforce software for time and time intended. So what we're kind of known for is our rapid deployment solutions, and we have rapid deployment solutions for each one of the modules of success factors. And the real benefit to you is that this, this cuts down on the time and the cost of the implementation. So we can offer you a, a low fixed price implementation and also, you know, do that with milestone payments. And so when we're doing that, we're, we're absorbing the majority of the risk. And that just shows the confidence that we have in our implementation team. So we've implemented really pretty much all the mod different modules, different size companies, but also we've integrated success factors with you know, different solutions such as ADP and Kronos and SAP. I'd like to say that we've, we've seen it all as far as the integrations. So we're also certified in the integration, the solutions, the integration solutions that success factors provides. And the name of those are, are Boomi, which is one middleware solution they use a lot, and also now the HANA cloud integration, as well as a team of, of uh, development consultants that implement ABAP and Java. <clears throat> so what we also do is we support a lot of clients. I mean, with our 100 clients, we support them, but plus others. So we have very flexible support programs with no minimums. Plus we offer, if, if you'd like, a, like health checks or release management um, support. If, you know when you're when you come up with your new releases and success factors. So if we go to the next slide, we just it's just kind of a, a blend of our different clients. And I think the key is that you understand is that we implement all different industries and all different sizes of companies. I mean, this is all we do is HR, and we're considered a true global HR consulting firm. So we have clients that have 50 customer, they have 50 employees up to 85,000 employees. So you'll see some companies that are very large, such as Raytheon, Tyson Foods, Nike, but also a lot of kind of the mid-sized boutique companies, such as like companies you'll see on there like Creton, GT Solar, and Pfeiffer. So that's just a little overview on our company, so you know who we are and what we do. And then uh, now we'll pass it on to our presenter, Carrie, and maybe she'll talk to you at first about the, uh, about the agenda. Thanks a lot. Hello, everyone. My name is Carrie Herzog, and I've been implementing Success Factors Performance Goals Management for the last seven years. So I've seen a lot of the most recent changes come around with uh, V11, V12, V12A, et cetera and have kind of followed the process through the different steps to see the most recent development with continuous performance management. Uh, today I'd like to talk about uh, performance management in general, a little bit about what we currently do, 
um, why we need to change what we're currently doing because of uh, how work has changed. And then what continuous performance management can do to guide us towards the future in our work. I'm going to do a little demo in the system, so we're going to take a look directly in success factors and show you what it looks like in your system. And then we'll go ahead and I have a couple reminders and a, a, can take some questions at the end, so we'll save some time at that at the end for those. Today's performance management, um, most people believe and feel when you question them that it's just time consuming. It's seen as something that goes on top of your work. I need to do this too. I need to fill out my form. I need to be reviewed. I have other more important things to do. It's always considered an extra. Um, we also know that they're pretty subjective. We worked really hard uh, to combat the biases that we have, to combat the how we how we review somebody and try to be as unbiased as possible but it's time passes and and people forget and we want to make sure that we we can overcome those biases and remove some of that subjectivity with our performance reviews most of the time they don't really change the employee's behavior nothing that we we say or do to an employee is going to change what they're doing it's it's a one time warning one time explanation isn't going to truly change or get to that heart of that the true issues that are taking place they're certainly not motivating um, they like i said are done they're filed they're forgotten and they don't motivate people to really continue to do better at their work it's frustrating as well because with our current performance review processes, we still use those annual reviews for, for compensation, uh, for actual dollar compensation and for career building for the future. We are expected in this short period of time to create goals, to set someone's pay, to make improvements on their skills, to provide them some feedback and to develop skills for the future. So that's a lot to expect from an annual performance review or even a semi-annual review. That's, that's a lot to, to a lot of weight put into something that's not very strong. Work has changed. What we do at work changes. How we do our work, how we even find a job has changed completely from what we were doing 10 to 20 years ago. Um, people are working together in teams more and more. The groups are meeting together just as we are today from all around the world. There's a lot more collaboration, social collaboration, and, and ways that people communicate with each other. New employees come and go. And for people in HR, we, everybody understands the frustration of, of re-onboarding re all the time and of, of getting someone up to par and, and losing them fairly rapidly and having to start that all over again. That new employee turnover, um, I think, can be, can be affected. By, by pleasing and by, by helping those employees to know that there's, there is a place for them, if there is a place for them in the company. Employees today, too, are also requiring more immediate feedback. Um, they're, they're requesting that they, they know immediately how they've done, and while sometimes that's seen as a, as a negative, um, I think quite often that's just human nature. We, you know, if you, if you make a good meal, you want to know about it right away. If, you're, if you've done something, you, um, in, in a sport, if you're being coached, you're not going to wait six weeks to tell somebody they need to run faster. You're not going to tell someone that they took a bad turn. You need to make sure that you've, you've coached them and given them that feedback immediately to make those changes. Uh, we 12-month goals are traditionally what we've done, even in success factors, and that's kind of unrealistic. A 12-month goal is a really long time for humans. We, we know that if we want to complete something in a year, um, we don't have those little side uh, milestones to, to guide us to that year-long goal. And uh, continuous performance management is going to provide that. As you can see from the graphic, continuous performance management is, is very cyclical. It's not just, um, this is the same process, um, but it doesn't happen once a year. It can happen monthly or quarterly or um, project by project by project. It can happen um, weekly um, and, and even daily because of how we communicate. And basically what we're doing is keeping more track of all of our meetings in the system. Instead of having notes, post-its, papers, files, 
we're keeping track of all those discussions and the feedback that we're giving and that we're given um, in one place. So we can refer back to it, we can refresh our memory, we can set these goals, and we can continue to um, plan and proceed forward. This helps the employee manage a relationship. They're communicating more on an ongoing basic, on, I'm sorry, on an ongoing um, basis, and it allows people to have shorter term realistic goals. They can achieve these goals, move through their work uh, without, uh, without that long annual review process. The nice thing as well about CPM is that if you've already got business goals in the system or you've already got development goals or a development plan, you can tie your discussions and your activities and achievements to directly to those specific goals. So you can see what you're doing and your manager can see what you're doing to achieve them along the way. There's also a place in the system for managers to provide coaching tips, coaching advice. Uh, very similar to what we do in performance forms, there's coaching advice available on, on a more ongoing basis. Let's take a look in the system. We'll do a demo. And as you can tell from the, the graphic on this slide that there is a CPM for mobile. It is available for the for the for your phones and tablets, making it much easier to put in a quick activity or to make a note of something. Um, so we'll take a look at Brooke Brown as a manager and Felicia Ford as an employee. And, and we'll go right into the uh, demo site. I need to warn you that the demo site is a little bit slower than some of your instances, so uh, keep that in mind. And I'm going to go ahead and proxy as uh, Brooke Brown, the manager. We can see what the manager sees in the system. Okay, I'm in as Brooke Brown, and I'm on the home page. And as is most often the case, we man can manipulate and maneuver, verse, uh, navigate, sorry, via the tabs in the upper left-hand corner. Notice continuous performance is its own tab. Um, it's not just performance, it's not going to be where the forms are, but it is going to be able to link to those forms. When I click on continuous performance, again, it's very similar to the goals and objectives in that you can see your information as Brooke, but I can also see my team. My team will populate below my name and I'll be able to click on their continuous performance management activities as well. So let me take a look. I'm Brooke and I want to look at Felicia's activity. These are her activities and there's also a tab for her for her achievements. Now activities are basically the milestones. What are the separate steps that you're taking to complete the job? What, se what steps are you taking to get to that goal or that development goal? And achievements are what have you accomplished? What have you finished? What are you done with? What's, what, what accomplishments have you had over this week, this month, this year? And they'll all be populated together for re reference for that annual review, but also for discussion along the way. So if I'm Felicia, um, today's October 18th, I can take a look at the different activities that she's been working on. She's got to learn the comp module, and she's been doing these things to learn that module. Notice some of these things have been entered by Brooke, her manager, and some were entered by, her, by the employee herself. This is another activity, and she can easily add an update to that activity. and add a note to it. If I add an activity, I have the ability to set the status of that activity. These are all determined by you as a company, what labels you'd like, what, company, what colors you'd like for each label. Um, maybe it's a low priority or medium, you can default. If I set it as high, um, we'll see that it moves to the top of my list. Notice here that her performance objectives, her goals from her goal plan, the default goal plan, are populating here. 
and or if it's a development goal, she can easily add a development goal as well. Because I set this activity as high, it's going to go ahead and populate to the top of my activity list. I can change them around and reset them. I can complete them and move it. If I move it to someplace else, it can, it'll, like it just asked me if it's considered an achievement, and it'll move it to my achievement list for me. I can also flag. I can target things. And the action button lets me edit or delete a specific comment or activity. At the bottom, continuing down past my activities, I can add other topics. Other things I forgot to mention to my manager, other things I want to mention to my employee, I can add topics here and we can just tick them off after we've finished them. Sort of like a to-do list for your one-on-one -on -one meeting. And because I'm a manager, I can go ahead and provide feedback for Felicia. This feedback can be ongoing, it can be after an event, it can be after a project, but what it does is it populates with one thing she did well, so there's my motivation, and one thing Felicia needs to improve upon. So I can do, go ahead and enter, again, any comments, and those will appear, whoops, those will appear when she um, enters the system as well, and she will be seeing them immediately. And it'll warn me if I say okay, those are um, saved. Let's take a look at the achievements. And these can be organized two different ways. Again, achievements are what I've accomplished. Um, what did I do today? What did I get done? What's ready for the, by the end of the week? Um, I can go ahead and have my achievements listed by time. So, for example, if I had had um, other months in the past, it would list September, October, November. Um, these are all from October. These are my achievements for October. And notice there's um, the actual achievement, and then there's some comments underneath. These comments are feedback from other people. So let's say I have this test achievement. I'm going to go ahead and say when I click on the action button, not only can I edit and delete it, I can also request feedback. Now this feedback is not documented necessarily um, um, any place in the system except here and on the performance form if you if so desired. And I'll show you what that looks like as well. I can enter anybody in the system. So let's ask uh, David Drew. The email is pre-populated. The message is pre-populated with text. You can go ahead and edit that, change it, and send it. When I proxy as David Drew, and he's on his home page, he sees up here in this to-do list the feedback requests. There's one person requesting something, and notice he doesn't have to enter any other layers of the system. He can do this right from the home page. It says feedback request, please, re please reply, and he can go ahead and answer here without ever having to go to the continuous performance management module. When I go back to achievements for Felicia, I can now see underneath that particular achievement, David Drew's comment appears. And if there's more than one, they'll continue to populate beneath. I can also view this list, besides chronologically, I can view it by objective. And again, this can be turned off, or only one or the other can be turned on if so desired. This is performance objectives, and these are development objectives. So if I'm looking at my performance objectives, here's my objective, it's listed. And then these are the achievements so far that I've, I've accomplished to achieve this goal. 
and of course any comments that are go would go with it. Development objectives, same thing. I'm supposed to improve my writing skills, my presentation skills, and these are the things that I've done to show that I am working on this particular development objective. And I can continue to request feedback for those as well. Let's go back to activities. And one of the things that CPM talks about is the one-on-one -on -one meeting. And that one-on-one -on -one meeting is basically any kind of discussion or sit down or or um, chat about your accomplishments on a, any particular day, week, quarter. And the system allows you to capture the meeting. So what happens is every activity that you've put in, all the feedback you've gotten, or all of the um, other topics you've discussed, and any coaching advice you've offered or received, can all be captured in a, in a snapshot. I can say capture meeting, and it's good. I, it's going to ask me if I'm really done with this meeting and I'm capturing it. And I just completed my one-on-one. -on -one. What this does is it takes that screenshot and it files it chronologically with these, with these arrows. I can go back to, let's see, the 14th. This was my snapshot or my, my screen capture on the 14th. This was my one-on-one -on, -one on the 15th, my one-on-one -on, -one on the 15th in the afternoon, I did it again, the 16th, and so on. So you can see that you've, you've captured all this information, it's back there for you to review. So if you've edited, if you've deleted something, if you cross something else off, it's still saved, it's still captured in your um, screenshots and in your one-on-one -on -one meetings. Let's take a look at how CPM can affect your goals and performance because the modules are all directly linked. Actually, I'm gonna, I think I'm gonna go to the, I'll go to development. I think I have more there. If I am looking, I'm Brooke, and I'm gonna look at Felicia's development plan. The system adds a column it adds a column called CPM achievements and it gives you a number. It notes how many CPM achievements are associated with that particular development or performance goal. When I click on that three, it is a link and it pulls up the, the actual activity that is linked to, uh, and I'm sorry, the actual achievement that is linked to that performance goal. It also lets me link and view the feedback. So if I'm looking through someone's development plan, I can see what are they doing for this? How are they working on this? And I can, I can see how they're doing. I can see what other people think they're doing and even see my own notes. As far as the performance form, let's look at the um, performance form for Felicia. I'm going to proxy as Felicia. Now Felicia has her performance form in her self-review step. Here's her form. It's in the B12 accelerated module. It's at self-evaluation. Self and if I take a look at her development goals section, it tells me that the achievements tab populates with any of those achievements, a little trophy icon, showing me the achievement, the date it was achieved, and again, any feedback which she solicited or which I as manager solicited for her on this particular, achieve, on this particular goal or objective. So those can be added to the performance forms and to the objective and development plans as well. So it is truly all linked together. The ability to, to see it all, um, all three modules working together is possible. If, you, if that's not desired, you can essentially turn that off so that it could be a freestanding tool on its own. There are emails. 
Um, in admin tools, there's emails that can let you know you haven't entered one. You can set the dates as an administrator, how frequently you'd like to remind people to um, put in activities or to set up achievements or to have a one-on-one. -on -one. So there are emails that uh, send notifications as well. Let's go ahead and just want to remind you, as we were looking at V12A, um, that the end of life is coming up for PM V11 and V12, the, the initial version 12. Uh, these are ending for maintenance in the next six months. So if you're still on the older system, you might want to start thinking about getting some guidance with updating and upgrading that, uh, making sure it's either a new version, a new, um, new cycle if you're interested in, in changing what you currently do or if you want to just re- uh, continue what you're doing but put it into the new UI, that's certainly something that Tara can help with. The end of life entirely is a still a year, another year and a half away, um, but be thinking about um, getting that support. That's CPM. Um, I'm sure that there's more to, more to play with, there always is, uh, but if there's any questions, um, go at Saima, we're, we're ready whenever you are. Thank you. Gary, thank you so much for that very informative presentation. And I'll open up the floor for questions. If there's any questions, I don't see anything at this time. Um, please feel free to uh, type in in the question box, and Gary can address uh, your questions. Carrie, we have a question. Um, the question is, does CPM connect with JAM? At this point, it does not. Okay. Do you know when 360 forms um, will move to the new version? <laughs> no, they still haven't announced that. They have not said anything about that yet. Okay. Do you have a, to be on V12 to use CPM? Yes, you need to be on V12 and you need to have role-based permissions implemented. Okay, great. We have another question. Um, they want to know how they can actually get started with implementing um, continuous development. Um, there's um, the majority of the tools are, are in admin tools. Um, there are a couple things that you want to be really careful of, and that's with role based permissions, um, making sure that you have everything. Um, set properly. So that would be, there are guides online and there's also um, consultants who can assist with that if you are interested in reaching out to Tara. There is some information though on success factors on getting it started. Great. We also have um, contact information for Scott. If you have any questions and you are interested in uh, going ahead with the implementation, please feel free to uh, contact Scott directly or you can contact Carrie or myself, and we can definitely assist you with that. Any other questions? Can you exclude feedback from being seen by employee until a set period? The feedback that you send is in, in the system is immediate. That one is immediate, so they, they send it and it's going to appear in the module. 
Um, it doesn't have to appear, though, on the performance form. So if you are in the middle of a, a review process, for example, you don't need to have it appear on the form at the same time. Sorry, so somebody's asking again about the CPM connecting with Jam. So it does connect with Jam? It, it doesn't. It does it not. Doesn't. Okay. Mm -mm. Okay. Great. Um, do we have any more questions? Looks like we are done with all the questions. Um, thank you, everybody, for attending our webinar on, on continuous performance. Here we have a slide with uh, Scott Lance's uh, email address, as well as Carrie's. Please feel free to reach out, reach out to us, and we'll be more than happy to assist you with any of your questions or if you have any requirements at all. Thank you so much, and have a wonderful day. Bye now.